Hello, greetings and welcome to our first life hack. Today's lesson will cover automating Twitter growth. In this and other videos, we seek to get more creative and leverage the power of Azuka flows in ways that may not fall into more traditional categories, but are nonetheless great ways for you to get value out of our amazing product. Want to try using Azuka on your own, perhaps on a more personal use case? Keep watching to learn more. Now, as I've said already, today's life hack focuses on Twitter and automating Twitter growth. This is something near and dear to me. Why? Because personal brands in social media are every bit as important and perhaps sometimes more important than just your company's corporate presence. Now, I have been a big user of LinkedIn, but my Twitter account needs some love. Not long ago, I may have had perhaps 200 followers on my account. Most of them were friends, brands I follow, or maybe people I've worked with in the past. Now, like me, you may have the same issue. Some of you may have used great products such as Sacito to build your Twitter brand. We've recently discussed this on our Connector podcast series, so today I'm going to take that a little bit further and show you how Azuko can help you automate your Twitter growth and do it without being blocked by Twitter. If you used any automation tools with Twitter, you may already know that Twitter has been tightening the rules around automation. Some of this is in response to criticism over bot use during the last few years, particularly during the U.S. election. Now, Twitter, as any SaaS platform that's in good standing, wants their users to have a good and authentic experience. That means they want to nix excessive and improper automation, which is spamming or hurting the platform. Now, there's good and bad in this. The bad side is that most of us don't have hours a day to sit in front of Twitter searching for the right people to follow. That's labor intensive, so it's only fair to automate. Now, the good news is that Azuqua is a great integration platform as a service or iPaaS that can solve this problem. And we can solve this problem in a way that won't get you blocked by Twitter. So let's dive in. So in today's life hack, I'm going to walk you through the process of building out a flow to do just this. Now, remember, if you don't already have an Azuko account, you can get a free 30 day trial immediately. Just go to our website, www.azuko.com, click the big orange try now button, and you'll be up and running within minutes. Okay, let's get ready. To get started, we need to do just a couple of things. First, get your account credentials. You'll need these, of course, to create a connection to your Twitter and perhaps your Google Sheets account if you're using that service. If you're using a shared or corporate account, do make sure that your whole team knows what you're doing because this may affect things. Two, determine the kinds of hashtags or topics that you want to follow in Twitter. Now we can tweak this later or in fact at any time, adding or removing tags as we see fit, but we have to start with something. In my case, I've picked a few different hashtags such as digital transformation and automation to work with. Now step three, go ahead and log into Azuqua. It's easy to do that once you have an account. So let's get it in the app and start building. So the first step here is to create your connection to your Twitter account. Again, this is pretty easy. If you've already clicked that big orange try now button and you've registered for your account or you already have an account to work with, great. Click the login button and you'll be taken to the login page. Now here I type in my email, my password, click sign in, and voila, we are now going to be in the platform. You can see all the flows that I have generated. Now I'm of course not giving away all of my credentials, but let's go in and look at one other thing. Now to create a new connection, you'll click settings and you'll hit connections and you'll select the new connections option. From this, I would type in Twitter and you wanna do this again for every account that you're going to be working with. Give it a name, again, shorter and sweeter is better and click create. Now, once I do create, you're going to see that we'll be asking you for an authorization. You'll go through all of this, click sign in and you'll be authenticated in Twitter. Once again, you'll want to do this for all of the connections that you want to set up. The other connection that you'll have if you're using it is Google Sheets. Make sure you authorize that and we're good to go. For this flow to work, we're going to need to build a table to capture some of the information that's outside the confines of Twitter. Calling APIs on a regular basis would demand a lot of the Twitter API, so it's 
good form to bring this either into a Zookwa as an Azuqua table or use a database or spreadsheet like Google Sheets to store details. For this life hack, I'm going to do it two ways. So I'm going to show you a spreadsheet in G Sheets or Google Sheets, and I'm gonna build a table in Azuqua too. So we'll do it both ways. The Google Sheets version will be the best for most accounts. Azuqua tables will be great for team accounts or enterprise accounts where you have a larger number of rows that you can work with. But Google Sheets will scale and let you go to many tens or hundreds of thousands of records. So it's great to work with, no problem. Let's get started. So you can see on the screen here, I have a Google Sheet up and it's untitled. Really what I need to do is something very simple. We just need to create date, added, uh, username, etc. and work through this and then title the sheet. Okay. I've already done this and you can see that I've actually got some data in here. So I'll switch over and you can see I have date added username, name, description, location, followers, lifetime tweets, and that's it. So it's a pretty simple table and it has all the things that we want to record for those people that we're going to be friends with or people that we're going to be following. Now, similarly, you may want to use an Azuqua table. There may be a little bit of performance gain. So if you want to do it this way, that's great too. Now, I'm not going to replicate the whole thing here other than to say I'm going to create a test table. And to do this, what I would do is go into the Azuqua interface, click tables, then click plus new table. Then I can give my table a name. So say this is tracking table and give it a description to be a good form. And then very simply, I would go in and add the same things that I saw over on this spreadsheet. My date added, so I can type that in. And in this case, I'm gonna leave it be a string and I can click the add another button and then I can go down the, my list, creating all the fields I want. So username, et cetera. Now I'm gonna stop there. I already have this created. So I'm gonna cancel out of this and I'm gonna go back to my tables to show you what this looks like as well. So here I have my Twitter friends table. Again, it's very much the same as that spreadsheet you just saw. Username, name, etc. All the fields that I want, we've got it all. So that's great. Now, every time we follow somebody, what we're going to do is update this table with a new record. And that way we're going to be able to use it in other parts of our flow to see if we've already added somebody and we don't get a duplicate, etc. Now again, this is great for having a record of all those people we followed and a key to Twitter in good form is for people to follow you back. Generally, if I follow somebody and I seem like somebody relevant to their ecosystem, they're going to follow me back. More on that later. We'll get into that in a little bit. Next, let's go ahead and click the new flow button that's at the top of your screen. What we're going to do is go ahead and select that Twitter connection that we just created. And then I'm going to click the monitor keywords card to get started. Here, I wanna put in a couple keywords just to show you what you can do with multiple kinds of keywords. So I'm gonna select digital transformation. And then I'm also going to put in an or, which allows me to pick from multiple keywords. And let's just key in automation. Again, these may be different for you and that's great. Also note that here, I've already got my Twitter account pre-selected. I only had one connection, so that's the one that gives me option two. If you had more than one, you would have a couple to choose from. So I'm going to click done. Now, in this case, you can see I have a lot of fields. I'll just do a quick reminder. If you click the other options gear at the bottom, you can choose the fields that you want. I can deselect or select all these accordingly. I'm not going to touch that right now because we're just going to do a quick test. Also, I have an option to change my scheduling. And if I'm really stuck, I can click on the help button. Now, again, I just want to test things out. Let's see what we're getting from our Twitter feed and do something with it. So basically all I want to do is monitor for some keywords, do a quick test and check the user's profile for some of these. So I'm going to click add action. And in this case, I want get user profile. So I can just start typing that in, get user profile. That will show me Facebook and Twitter. I want Twitter and get user profile. And now all I need to do is drag over that username into this username field. This isn't a complicated flow and this is not done by any stretch. All I want to do is test this out. So good form, let's name our flow. I'm gonna give it a name, Twitter follow demo, just a test. Okay, click the save all data button, just so that you have a record and it will make it easier for you to troubleshoot. And you should choose a good description when this goes into production, click save. Great, so now I have this 
all together. And again, this is not going to be functional. It's just going to go out to Twitter. Let's go ahead and do a quick test on this and see what we get off of those keywords. And it may take me a couple times to do this. And now you can see it's actually returned some people. I've got one, two, three, all the way seven different records at this instance. And these are people that if you look in their description, they should have some of my tags in there. In this case, it does not. Um, and it may not in, in many things because we need to start to refine this. Now here you can see that I am definitely pulling in digital transformation. That's great. That's a person I'd want to look at and potentially follow. So that's it for now. If this works, great. This shows us that we can read from Twitter and get back some information. And now the more challenging work begins to build out our flow. Before we get too far down the rabbit hole, let's caveat this with one really important best practice. Now, as with any automation, you should be, one, considerate to your vendors, so the apps that you're using, and two, intentional with your goals or objectives. If you build a flow, I strongly recommend that you make sure of the following things. First off, let's talk about limiting your follows, the people that you're going out and actively trying to follow. It may sound nuts, but when I created my first flow and I left it on overnight, I came back to over 1,500 new follows. Wow, I mean, that's a lot. That's aggressive following, which could get you suspended from Twitter. Clearly, if I left that running in perpetuity, it could look awful spammy on many counts. So I'm gonna build this flow with a governor or a rate limiting feature. Now, two, some other things we should put in place a few other stopgap measures to make sure that we have a good flow. So I have a list of three items for you. One, use a table to capture the names of the people that we are actively following to avoid following them or making requests to follow them multiple times. Again, we're reducing the overhead on Twitter's API. Two, make sure that the people that we're following have followers themselves you know, look something like 200 or more followers. That's a good number. Some guidelines may give you a little bit lower, a little bit higher. We just want to make sure that this is a human being, not a bot trying to do something funky. And three, also make sure that the people we're following are active. Now, I'm not going to show you this in my flow, but this is something that we definitely want to do. And perhaps look at the person who's been active in the last week or two weeks or a month even, not three years ago. Now, throughout this demo and at the end, I'll cover other best practices in line. So stay tuned for more. Now let's do this for real. I'm gonna begin with a Google Sheets version of this process. And I'll also cover or highlight all the steps and changes you'd need to do if you're going to use this as an Azuqua table. Pretty similar and may have some performance games either way, but you can do it either way. Okay, so let me cover some key points here. First, this Google Sheet process requires a couple flows. Now, it could be reduced to just one if needed. So here's what we're going to do. First, you can see on the screen, I have a new table. So I've clicked Home to Tables, clicked Plus New Table, and I'm going to create an extremely simple table. And all this does is going to track the number of people that I'm following on a given day. Now, recall, I created a spreadsheet before. This is my Twitter's friend sheet. And you can see that date added is the first element of this. And if I go all the way down to the bottom, you can see ones that I've created just recently as of 719, which is today, the time of this recording. Now, if I look at this, basically I want to put a governor and say, I only want to have X number of people per day that I follow, not to look too spammy. So let's go out and create this. And, and once again, I will name it something. I've called this my Twitter daily follow count and it re this is a table that stores the current by day count of people we're following and it resets daily. Okay, pretty easy. And in fact, this is easier than I'd ever imagined. And then I have one line and you can initiate this by just clicking a row. I created one column and you'll click the plus new column and just type in something like following and then you'll have a one record. And in fact, I just went clicked in on this and then it would give me a row ID. This is what we need right now. You could set following to anything you want don't care, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna grab this row ID later. So I'm gonna leave that up and let's go back to my flow. Now, what I want to do with this again is create a simple flow first that looks at my spreadsheet of all my friends and it says, okay, 
So for today, how many people have I followed? And we're going to look at that and query that periodically just so I don't go over the cap. Now that's a simple flow and I'll click home again. Now I've already built this out. So in our documentation surrounding this, I'm gonna tell you how to do this yourself. So don't worry. Now I want to look at the Twitter follower count. Okay, so what this does, this flow goes out and looks at that spreadsheet that I just showed you. And what it does is it runs on a regular, say five minute interval, just keeping this list updated. Again, this is not a lot of overhead and it's only one place. Basically I'm storing a variable that I can use in my flow. You could do this a couple of ways, but what I've done is I've created a new flow and let's just do this for kicks. Created a new flow and this is a very simple flow. I wanna skip over the My Connected apps and basically I just wanna click schedule, okay? I've already done that and let's go back to this flow and you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm clicking on my Twitter follower account and this is what I'd see, the scheduled flow. Just the current time, current execution, not much I have to do about that other than decide when I want it to run. In my case, I set it at five minutes, not gonna be a lot of overhead in the system. You may wanna tweak this depending on how your flow runs. So I'll save that and now I'll go start to build it. Now the first two cards are critical. What these cards do is set the date that I'm going to be looking for. Basically it's setting today. So I will add and click plus and click function and search for now. Spelling is hard sometimes. Click now, good, and then I get my now card. You can see it has all these different fields. If I wanna learn more, I can always click the help button down at the bottom. All I want to do is convert that to a string that I'm going to use for searching against my table to get the number of, of records on a given day. And I'm going to use that to update or add new rows to that table. So this is super important to me. Here, I've dragged my date field over to this date to string card. I've set a format. And again, you can play around with this to be a format that you want. I've chosen the year, month, date format, as you can see on the screen. And I've set my time zone to my local time zone. We're gonna use this later, so stay tuned. Now the next card you want will be a concatenate string card. Again, this is found under the function cards and you can type in concat and you'll see the card there. So I'm gonna click out of that and you can already see I've baked this in. What you will need now is to construct an API query that will be used in the HTTP request card that we're gonna have next. So all this one does, and again, I'll note all the parameters here so that you can add it to yourself, is I have a number of different strings that I smash together. So this is calling the API v4. This string actually is the spreadsheet identifier from Google that I can get by simply looking at the ID. And I can't show you this on screen, but this is my identifier and I'm going to fuzz it out. Uh, you will find that in the URL that's coming in from Google Sheets. It'll be a big long gobbledygook number. And then I have a method, which is I'm doing a batch get. I'm going and retrieving a bunch of things in bulk. And I'm looking at column A. And again, look at this. You see I have column A. I wanna look at the entirety of this column and only return the elements that are from today's date that are a match. Okay, so that's A colon A in Google Sheets or even Excel parlance. And that will and that output at the bottom of that card feeds right into my request. That is my API call. Now I don't need to put anything else here. Let's show you where this HTTP request card is. And okay, so you can see I have Google Sheets. I can click HTTP request. When I click that, I get the card that I see on my screen right here. So let's go back to that. Now. I didn't show you how to set up the connection to Google Sheets, but I trust that you know how to do that from previous stuff that I've shown you. Make sure that you have that. If you have that, you can simply find that that's already selected and you're great. Then I will set some options. Now I want to choose a get request type. These are all standard API calls and click done. And then I will drag the output of the first card into that. And then I get all this response stuff. Now I'll save you a lot of trouble by explaining that the, the information we want is buried in what's called a JSON, J-S-O-N object. That's a shorthand way of saying it's a long text file with different elements that I can search upon and pull out information. One of these elements, and I'll show you this when I actually run the script, is value ranges. 
And then there's another one under volume ranges, which is values. So I have to search down in using this at card. At card is a special card. It is a list operation and again is found under functions. And I will select at as a list. There's also an at string, but I want to use the list card. I'm going to exit out of that. And I'll add two of these cards. And in sequence, I'll pull in value ranges. And then down below, I'm going to actually type in values in this row here, which I just did previously. So you would need to type that in under item and then drag that over into the next card. So you add a new list at add values into that. And then this item here, which is an object, will have all the information that I actually care about. We'll see this in play in just a moment, but basically I've grabbed the object, I pulled the piece of the object that I care about, and I filter where that item and what that's going to be, it's going to have a list of dates in it, where that item matches the output of my date to string card. That date to string card is today's date. So if today's date matches today's date in the spreadsheet, bam, I filter it, I get a list, and all I care about is returning the count of that list. Seems like a lot, pretty easy stuff. And again, I'll document this down below in the show notes and everything will be great. Once I have that list length, so I know I have three, I have four, I have 50, then I can update my row in my table. And that table, once again, is just a simple, simple table. This number here will show, will reflect how many people I'm following on that given day. Okay, so basically we're making this be an autonomous, asynchronous process that goes and just updates, 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 and helps me check and avoid having to call Google Sheets way too much. Just check periodically to see how many people I'm following already. With that, and again, all of this will be documented, let's go back to our primary flow. I'm not going to save any of the changes here, but now I'm gonna go back into my Google Sheets Twitter follow flow. And we'll look at the cards here. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to go through these in sequence. Some of them will be familiar to you. You've seen them before. Great. So again, starting from the top, remember we have our Twitter monitor keywords card. And I had already set that up. So I paired that down to be just username, description, and content. Execution ID needs to stay there. The content is what I really care about because that's where somebody will be typing in a message and it will feature a certain hashtag. So that's what I'm looking on. That's what I'm going to operate from. Now, the first thing I did in this flow is I added what I call a control card. The control card here is a function card, and I am going to choose one called an assign if, okay? I have renamed my card, and I'm just adding it in here just to show you how this works. This is like a variable card, and I like to put this in here because for this given flow, I may want to come back and tweak it. I may want to tune it. I may want to increase the number of follows today. I want, want to decrease it. I might want to add other parameters in. So this kicks off my flow with all the things that I care about and I can do it in one place rather than having to search down deep. Now you can rename a card. So in this case, I edited my card. I changed the name of this card to something that made sense to me. And I changed the name of all the fields, et cetera. So here I've got the first one, which is my follows per day. Again, I customize this, I change the name, great. That makes it more like a variable than anything. I added two rows, a follows per day and a follower minimum. That follower minimum is how many people are following the individual that I'm trying to target, okay? If I'd have more, I'd add them in here and now I can use these parameters anywhere else throughout my flow. The next two cards you've already seen, this is my now card and date to string. That's just getting the date in a format that I care about. It's great, we'll use that downstream. And then the very next card is a table card. Now I can find that again by clicking the plus sign, clicking functions, and then looking at tables. And under that, I have a number of different things. So again, I'm creating a one or two line Zuko table that's basically just storing a variable for me. That I can update on the fly and I can read asynchronously. So what I've done is I've selected the read road card from that from tables I have gone out and the other thing I had to do like I said before is in this table there's a row ID I'm really wanting to update this number periodically so I can go and grab this copy this and go back into my flow and type this in to my row ID field 
Pretty easy, okay? That just identifies what area I actually am trying to update. Once I get that in, then I will pull that information out, which is, well, how many people am I following? I'm following four right now, great. And then I can do a continue if. Now this card, what it's doing, this is my rate limiter. This is my gate. This is keeping me from going over a certain number. Now in this context, it may get a little bit out of alignment, but I'm setting it at 50, right? I'm setting the count of people I want to follow at a cap of 50. So when I get to 50 a day, great, it stops, it doesn't process anymore until the next day, and then it does it again. I deeply recommend this as a best practice to rate limit this because this will help you getting on the radar. Again, if anybody from Twitter is watching, we want to make sure that people that are using this as an assist, okay? So let's do that. So we've got to continue if, now I'm dragging my field my from following from my read row. I'm dragging that field from my assigned card, which is followers per day, all the way over. And we're good to go. So if the number of follow people I'm following is less than the total number of follows a day, great. I can proceed. Otherwise, it halts the flow. It doesn't execute. And we're good to go. Okay. Now, if you remember the flow that we made just to test things, the next card would be the Twitter Get User Profile card. Again, everything's accessible here on Applications. I would look for a Twitter, and then I'd click on that, and then I'd do my Get User Profile. Easy peasy, right? So I've added that in, and in this case, I've returned all the fields from that. These are about that user that I'm going to use these fields later on. Follower count, full name, description, etc. This can help me tweak and prune and make my flow be all that much better. So I'm going to say done on that. So I've got at this point, I know that the people are have information. I've got the user profile. Now what? Well, the very next step that we need to do is to check the number of followers on that. We've already got that information. We did that on the get user profile card. So cool. So I created a new continue if card, added my follower counts, set to greater than equal the follower minimum that I had in my assigned card near the beginning. So that is uh, 200 people. So I don't want to follow anybody that has less than 200 people. I may also want at this point to add another card in there uh, maybe look to see what their their lifetime number of tweets are or other things just to fine tune. Perhaps I'd even want to do geolocation. Perhaps I'd even want to do language. All these kinds of things are important, okay? And will help you come up with a better and more refined flow. So once I've got that and I know their follower count is over 200, then what? Okay, this is where we want to go back to that table we created and just make sure we're not trying to add person in duplicate. Now, again, I'll show you my Twitter friends table. You can see it's pretty long right now. Um, I've got a username in all of this. So all the information, once I've created something, created a record in that, I've got this to be searchable. So I select, and again, I'll do this to be complete. I will select my application and I will select my Google Sheets and click on that and you can see I want to do a search, and that's all the way near the bottom. You could also search on that here. So I'll search, click search column, okay? I've got that in there. I've got my Google Sheet account. Then I have some options that I want to set up. So basically it's asking you what spreadsheet are you using? What is the worksheet? And what column do I care about searching? That's all here in your spreadsheet, okay? So I'm looking at the username, column, which is the second column in this, all the way at the top, I can see that's my second column. And great, so we've got that. Next, if we've got all that done, click done, all I care about, all I care about in this is, are there records being returned? Is there a record being returned or not? So I'll take a row number. So if I match once, or if I match more than once, great. If I match once, I will say, okay, I've already got this person, move on. So that's adding another continue if card, dragging over the row number. And if that row number, that is empty, that means there's no record. And that means I'm clear to add this user and follow this user. So the last two cards in this are very simple. I click plus and choose my follow user card, again, using my Twitter account. 
And then I simply grab that username, drag it over, and that's it. It's following that user. But to be very complete, to make sure that I don't have duplicates, et cetera, and to have a local record of everybody that I'm following, I will do one more thing is, which is create new row, okay? So again, click my action here. I'll click the Google Sheets create row card. Um, I'll set my options, which are my Twitter friends, worksheet number one, great, I've got that. And I'll pull in all these columns. In fact, they should appear quite automatically. I can re remove some of these if I choose to do so. I don't want to because I want to add all of that information in. So I've got my username, my full name, description, location, and you can see at the end, I've got all this information, I've got great information. And I can use this in all kinds of different ways. So I've got followers of another stuff. I may wanna come back in here and do cleanup as well. So if with that in mind, we are done. We've got our Twitter person followed, everything is good to go, and we can begin to execute this. So let's go ahead and try this out. Now you can see, Good form, save your flow. Save early, save often, you never know. I like to save every time I make some kind of minor changes. And you can turn this flow on. And then to test, we will click the test flow button. I would specify as well what kind of schedule you want this to run on. Now I would discourage you from doing it every minute. You don't need to do that, but there's a sweet spot that I found that's somewhere between one minute and 15 minutes. Again, we put in a rate limiting step. So if this was to find more records, once I hit a cap of my personal cap is 50, I'm done. I'm not gonna do anything more and the flow just doesn't execute. So that prevents me from doing a bunch of API calls. Everything's hunky dory. So let's go ahead and try to run this. And again, this might take a couple times to do if you're just checking for data. Uh, I click on this button a few times, it's fine. And you can see now I got a hit. Again, that's actively going out to Twitter, calling the API, looking for what's coming in. And now you can see that it's starting to roll through all my cards. Um, here it went out, it grabbed Gratin Boy. Uh, I've got a description, I've got some content. I'll look in my content, oh yes, it hits digital transformation. That's what I wanna see. So now it goes through and it starts to get me the date. It reads the row to see how many people I'm following and I've got four. That's good because four is less than or equal to 50. Great, and I can continue. And now it gets my user profile, all the information about this user, including their lifetime tweet count, which is cool. And then I know that uh, the total number of followers is greater than or equal to 200 by a lot. I search to see if I've already added this person it sees that it, this person's already out there. This person's really active, so I don't add them. Now I can look at some other cases here where it has added people. And in this case, you see I have indeed created a new row. Everything's great. So that's it. I've run my flow. I've added new people. And now uh, I can go and look at that in Twitter if I choose to do so. So to wrap this up, let's talk about enhancement. Again, with any flow that I could show you, there's tons of things that are going to pop in your head to say, I could do this and I could do that and I can enhance this in this way and this other way. That's great, that's exactly what we want for you. I'm gonna talk about a number of things that I would personally do to enhance this process further. Now in this session, I can't show it all the way, but let's just talk about this briefly. So the first thing that I would try to do is implement an unfollow type of a process, okay? That would require a bit more work in a couple tables. For example, I already have my list of people that I follow, but I also want to go out to Twitter and download all of the people that follow me, okay? So as we saw before, if you look in either one of my tables, let's just pick the last one and say, okay, I've added this person on 719. And then I can look in my, I can write a flow that says, if that person followed me two weeks ago and still hasn't followed me back, let's archive or remove this person from the table. I might find them again, but, and I can add them again, but this helps to clean up. I don't want to mess up my follow to followers ratio, okay? A very next thing we could do is see if that follow to followers ratio is too low, it's negative. Well, to be quite honest, 
as you're growing and you're, as you're running a process like this, and again, this is an assist process that's helping you automate some of the things you would normally do, you should be actively involved in this, right? I would encourage you to add something in there to say, well, if my ratio dips down too negative, stop, don't run the flow for a while. Because what you will start seeing happen is people will start following you back and following you back. And at some point it's going to tip back up and then you can continue adding new people. Again, you should not detach yourself from this process. You should monitor it. You should be very active because at some point it's going to kick off and become organic. Now, other things you'd want to do, I already mentioned this in kind, perhaps look on the last active date of an individual. Let's see what language they are because if you can't communicate with them, it's going to make it hard and then see where they're located. If you don't care about anybody outside of Canada or South America or uh, Europe, Great, you can isolate those or geofence those locations. So you've got some of that information that should come in from the individual's profile. And then finally, I would also recommend figuring out a flow that allows or provides for organic follows. I've already seen since I started my process that as my follower count starts to rise, people find me organically. They see my hashtags, they click on me and they follow me. And that doesn't have anything to do with my process. So I'd want to bring these people back in to show they're following me and I might want to have something to automatically follow them back to make it easy. So tons and tons of opportunities. Once again, periodically groom this list. I would go back in and look at my list and see, is there any junk in here? Are there people that I didn't intend to get? Again, you're tuning, you're tweaking, you're doing whatever you can. Maybe you even add in another field on here to say archive or remove. And then when, that, when your script goes through, you can pull those back off. So really great stuff. And that's all. This has been, of course, a little bit long. All of the information that I've put in here will be updated with a workbook with some guidance on how to do each and every step. And if you need to reach out, great. Thanks for joining me on this first ever life hack. So remember, using APIs is something that you should do with respect to limits and respect to a platform's rules. A big part of automation is also just being aware of rules and using digital automation tools like Azuko responsibly. In other words, someone should be monitoring, caring for, and making sure things just don't get out of control or out of hand. Now I'll also share that within only 10 days when I started off building my flow, even just testing it, my number of followers had more than doubled over that period. And in fact, I turned my flow off after the first day and I've seen such a big increase that it surprised me. And even more, I've seen a lot more organic followers after that. There are more things that you could do with our platform. So make sure you listen to our podcast, review our training material, and above all, set out to make some great flows. Thanks again for joining us and get out there and make some connections.